It's 12.05 in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. Helping Seniors of Brevard for this Wednesday is coming your way. And let me introduce the host of Helping Seniors of Brevard. And as I always like to say, you get a daily double because he's also the executive director of Helping Seniors of Brevard. Here's Kerry Fink. Hey, thank you, John Harper. It's always good to be on the radio. We do this lunchtime gathering Wednesdays at 12 noon right here on 90.3 FM WEJF. Welcome if you're listening online at WEJF.net. And also if you're catching this as a podcast because we always make sure we get these out. Uh, so wherever you get fine podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, I, Apple iTunes, it's, uh, it's, you'll find us there, Helping Seniors Radio. And, of course, we also put this out on our HelpingSeniorsOfBrevard.org website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. So uh, please find it, like, and share. I think you're going to get a lot out of today's program. I'm really kind of excited to... Uh, To dive right in, we have several guests in the studio today, one of which is brand new to the radio, but this is a topic that Joe Steckler, our president and founder, has talked about for years, the importance of this particular topic. And I'm going to get there in just a moment. Uh, Joe, as you know, is uh, the 90-year-old retired naval captain and uh when he and his lovely wife terry moved here from gulfport mississippi where he was in charge of the navy's government retirement home there uh joe couldn't stay retired they moved out to satellite beach decided to be somewhat close to the base out there and joe immediately turns around and starts building the brevard alzheimer's foundation and creates those things called the joe's clubs which serve seniors and their caregivers uh, to this day in three locations throughout the county. And then Jen, when Joe retired from that in, two, I think it was like 2008 or something like that, Joe couldn't stay retired. So I met him uh, about the time that he was just getting things rolling with Helping Seniors of Brevard. And he said, we need a charity uh, in our county that can provide senior navigation because he said what happens is he said there are a number of seniors who have cognitive issues and things like that and of course that's what Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation was created to do but he said so many seniors are just struggling to navigate some of the things that come along the way with seniorhood and they need some guidance and direction and help from someone they can trust so in 2011, Helping Seniors of Brevard began as a 100% local to Brevard County charity. And since that day, we've been operating the county senior information helpline. That's a free call to 321-473-7770. I'll say that again so you gra- can, can get a moment to grab a pencil. It's 321-473-7770. Zero. And last year, we took over 5,450 calls from seniors and those who care, love and care for them about every topic imaginable, housing, legal, medical, financial, transportation, you name it. We've had a call on it. And um, what we try to do is what we call Senior Navigate, which is connect seniors and those who care and love for them uh, to resources that might make a difference in whatever area that they're pursuing. And One of the things that we've learned along the way, Joe called it making an aging plan. And we here in Florida understand a hurricane plan, right? It means you want to be prepared for the hurricane. It doesn't mean you want the hurricane. Aging plan is the same idea. You want to be prepared for aging. It doesn't necessarily mean you want it, uh, but, but, but you're still going to be prepared to work your way through it. And one of the things that we've learned along the way is that advanced planning really can make a difference. So to make it seem a little less intimidating, on our end, we've called it helping you get your ducks in a row. And because of that, then we've come up with a couple of corollaries to that main theme, one of which is don't try this on your own. We are so fortunate to live on the space coast of Florida where there are so many good resources available to help you navigate the things that we're going to be talking about uh, as it pertains to aging. And then the second thing, that's a second corollary to this, and you're really going to understand this when we talk with our guest today, is is don't be an ostrich. Don't stick your head in the sand. Go ahead and tackle this stuff head on. Let's plan ahead because you can get to a point with this stuff that if you wait too long, it really is too late. 
So with that as a little bit of a preamble, let me introduce you to a couple of guests in the studio. I'm going to kind of do this in reverse order. I'm going to first introduce a great friend of the Helping Seniors Organization. He is attorney Frank Scaglione, and you may know that name because Frank has been so kind to volunteer and help us in a, in, in a project that we call the 55 Plus Renters of Palm Bay um, Florida Eviction Prevention Project. Frank, how are you today? Very good. Very good. Thanks for having me. You know, we have, t- we have now uh, been on this program. We have uh, literally, I guess, a few more months of being able to do this, but we really get to talk to renters of Palm Bay, and I'm amazed at the response to the program where people say, I didn't realize I had these rights, because I guess the main thing that you impart to the folks who uh, register and sign up for the for for the uh, for the for the course, uh, and it's a free course. You you do have to be pre-registered, but but yeah, as a charity, we cover all of that. Um, but you really take the time to explain tenants' rights. You know, like what they can do and can't do. You know, the the land the landlord didn't fix the hot water heater, so can I not pay rent? And all those kind of questions that we we think, well, we can just not pay rent, and you help get us on the right path so that we understand what we can and can't do like that. Uh, Correct. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that um, the tenant landlord relationship, because it's so ubiquitous in everything that we do is just a contract and all the same principles that would apply between, um, you know, a dispute between Apple and Sony apply between a landlord and a tenant. uh, When you're talking about contract law, um, and an eviction is just like any other legal proceeding. There's yeah. there there are specific rules that are laid out by the statutes, um, rules of civil procedure that have to be followed, and um, the the but the big problem that most people have is if you get into that situation, a lot of times you can't afford an attorney right. to help shepherd you through the process. So. Right. Um, you know, what I, what I try to get across is that, you know, we can give them enough of an education that you can at least go to the courthouse and know what the right questions are to ask to, to, uh, protect your rights. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking it's fascinating because we've probably done half a dozen of these sessions. The next one, I want to give you the date for that. So you can go ahead and put this on your calendar. It's going to be uh, Saturday, March 16th. Um, we do, we call it breakfast with an attorney. So, uh, attorney Frank Scaglione is going to be there. And, uh, what we've, it's interesting, the things we've learned along the way, we asked, uh, both the people who really help us on the, um, the Helping Seniors Information Line, uh, talking about Nancy Deerdorf and Karen Wernland, to, to actually attend the seminar. And I know from myself, and I heard it from them, and I've heard it from people who've been through this training, how valuable it is. Because now we know questions to ask when somebody calls us on the helpline, and they say, okay, here's my situation, I'm being evicted. So before, we were just like, oh my goodness, this is awful. Now, because you've taught us what the process looks like, we know more questions to ask to find out where in that whole process somebody actually is. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think another big problem that people have with this is a lot of times, it doesn't matter how, how well you know your rights, um, you can still be evicted. You know, Because yeah. a lot of times it just comes down to you got to pay your rent. If you didn't pay your rent, yeah. you're going to be out at some point. But there's a process for a reason and it's so that people if they even if they do have to ultimately be evicted it can be done in an orderly manner that you know allows them to find a, find a new residence um so knowing the process allows you to make sure that you don't make yeah. make decisions that make it worse and for example maybe you know leaving as soon as you get that notice yeah right uh, you know <laughs> right. you you may have just you may have just cheated yourself out of an extra month of being able to find a decent place right. to to live, um, so you know things like that that you know that I think uh, people really benefit from just just knowing the process. Yeah, I know some of the comments that I've heard just as people have come in along the way is you know they'll come in and say, well, this is what's going on at my place. Does this sound right? Is this landlord overreaching? And and I've actually heard you counsel some people like this is probably not correct. And and then, but you're able to point them in a direction that helps them understand what the landlord can do and not do. Because really, you know, it's pretty intimidating when you go in and you sit down and you sign a lease agreement. They hand you this thing that's all these pages and all this fine print and where's the magnifying glass? And I don't even understand half of the language anyway. 
And so you just sign it, and you think you don't have any control over this. It's either I sign it or I can't rent it or whatever. And that's really not the case. And that's one of the things that you really drive home is that it's an agreement, and both parties have a chance to weigh in on that. And, you know, even landlords would have would benefit from attending the, yeah, the practice. I agree. Because, uh, you know, there is a lot of well-meaning landlords out there that they might think you can just change the locks. Yes. But you can't do that. Yeah, you talk a lot about a thing you call landlords can't do self-help. That's and, right. And that, that was a new concept when you shared that because I always thought, like, you know, you hear that. Well, if you don't pay your rent, I'm just going to change your locks or, what you know, stuff like that. And yet you can't get away with that. That that's yeah that's absolutely right. There there was a time when the only right that a tenant had was to live in the in the four walls of the yeah. of the building that was being rented, um, and then everything else was the landlord. So the landlord could take self help measures like changing the locks or right. just throwing your stuff out on the on the curb. Um, but that resulted in a lot of violence, uh, <laughs> oh unsurprisingly. <goodness>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's why the legislature has enacted things like Chapter 83 of the yeah. Florida statutes that outlines what the tenants and landlords' rights and responsibilities are. Yeah, I know when people leave this uh, session, they're really like grateful because, you know, to be honest, when we started, it's like, well, you know, if you're in trouble and you're having trouble paying your rent, which is where it starts for a lot of people, you know, there isn't. There isn't a perfect answer. It's just, it is, some of it is just ultimately what it is. But people leave feeling so empowered because they know a little bit more about how to navigate the system. And that's what we go right back to that's the purpose of helping seniors to help people navigate, you know, everything that you run into as seniors. So uh, Frank Scaglione, who is attorney, who volunteers his time with us and helps us on this, put this on your calendar right now. In fact, when I introduce our next guest, we were just talking about I, th- I think this will really help anybody who wants to take time. I thought it was an interesting comment. You said even a landlord would want to know these things because you don't want to make a misstep and then find yourself in a big legal battle that was way more than whatever the first thing started out to be, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So this is going to take place Saturday morning, March 16th, uh, 9 a.m. We meet at Mima's Barbecue. Uh, breakfast is thrown in. It's put together. The program is put together with underwriting from the help of our friends at the City of Palm Bay through the CDBG funding program. It's what makes this possible. There's only a few sessions left. So there's going to be like March, April, May, possibly June. But if you're going to take advantage of this program, it's got to happen fairly quick. We like for you to be a resident of Palm Bay because that's who the program is designed for. However, we as a charity will help anyone that we possibly can. So you are welcome. But you do have to uh, get registered. Again, it's free. You have to call uh, the Helping Seniors Info Line, 321-473-7770. And we'll be happy to get you set up. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But I want to kind of like dive in. I want to introduce the rest of the folks in the studio uh, because we've been sort of monopolizing this. First, um, let me start with a longtime uh, friend of the Helping Seniors Organization. Her name is Jennifer Barton. You know her because everybody gets our names confused. She is the owner of Seniors Helping Seniors of Brevard, a great organization that hires seniors to help seniors with things around the house. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? I am wonderful. It's good to be here. It's wonderful that you are. And also, we we have really, I am really excited about this because I said this at the outset of the show. Joe Steckler, our president and founder, has always talked about the importance of long-term care insurance. We have never, in the time that Joe started this, have had a resource to really talk effectively about this. And so today, we not only have an excellent resource to talk a little bit about this, but she herself is Dave Ramsey certified. So that almost means I don't need to introduce you, but I do need to introduce you. Welcome to the radio studio. This is Laura Lori, we call you, Peary, and you have an agency and you're a specialist in all these kind of things. Welcome. Thanks so much, Carrie. It's great to be here with all of you. Y- you know, Joe, from day one, we talk about making an aging plan and he's always concerned about people outliving their money. And he talks about a thing called elements of care. What he means is you got to get the right part of what you need for your aging 
at the right time. So Jennifer and I have talked many times on the radio about the fact that you really represent Jennifer and seniors helping seniors that first rung of care. It's just getting somebody used to being in the house and helping with certain certain things there. Correct. And then, but one of the problems that can happen when you're contemplating your aging plan is things can progress from there. And again, Jennifer, we've talked along the way, so often you end up being those surrogate hands and feet for uh, maybe adult children who live out of state. And there's a point where you have to have that call. Like, I think we're progressing past the stuff. We've got to take a look at the next level. And obviously because of your experience, you're pretty well positioned to help people get there. But that happens a lot of times as we get older. It does. It does. We just had to to do that with a client where we transitioned from our services to a a hands-on care company. And um, they're going to be taking care of him 24-7. And they're looking at uh, assisted living now. Right. uh, Because by the time you get to 24-7 care, you're looking at, you know, that's probably more money than an assisted living is. So now they're looking at that next step higher. Yeah, I, this is really what I want to get into the heart of with you, Lori, is that I understand that if somebody is looking at um, assisted living or a lot of times even people who go to assisted living find out they need extra help because assisted living is just like kind of like an entry level term and then people may need even more help. So I see a lot of times agencies will have to go in and help. And I know Joe has talked for years about what those costs are and and. I was under the impression, Joe was under the impression, that it's very difficult to find long-term care insurance. And that's why I'm so glad that you're here today to help us kind of like exercise through and tell us some things that we need to know. Can I start with just a basic question of having you explain long-term care insurance? I don't want to assume any of us really, we may think we know what it means. Um, Sure, that's a great question. Um, Just to back uh, back up a little bit, one of the reasons that Dave Ramsey recommends long-term care insurance is to protect the wealth that we've hopefully created. Like Joe says, many people are more afraid of running out of money than they are of dying. And Mm -hmm. so what our goal is to not only have a quality of care, but to leverage our dollars. So the the question that my most important job as a long-term care plan specialist is field underwriting. Um, and that means that I pull um, your medical history to see what plans you're eligible to apply for. Um, and that depends on the carrier. Different carriers have different thresholds and what they're, they're willing to approve in a long-term care policy. Um, so that's part of my job as a, an investigator and field underwriter is to see what you're eligible to apply for. Uh, what Dave Ramsey says is um, 60 is the time to start planning for long-term care. Oh, Good. That's that's one thing I disagree with him on. <laughs> okay. Because he's not a field underwriter. And so <laughs> so you can um wait till you're 60, but if you've already had a cancer diagnosis or had some kind of a medical concern, um there's going to be a delay in your ability to even apply. So this I think the sweet spot is 50 to 60. Um but I've got applications pending right now for a 36-year-old couple. So um the the question is when do I do this? The younger and healthier you are, the better your your options are. The more options that you have, the less money you're going to pay in a premium, the more benefit you're going to get in your policy design. Um, and that's our goal is to make sure that we've got quality of care when we need uh, assistance with activities of daily living. You know, I was just doing a uh, Helping Seniors television show with a lady by the name of Terry Brandt. She is the uh, community director for Buena Vida Um Continuing Care Retirement Community, if I'm saying that right. And this is a community that is a little bit different from a traditional assisted living where basically you're just renting your space. It's just like a version of like we were talking with uh, with attorney Frank Scaglione before. You, you're paying rent. If you can't pay rent, now you're, you're going to have a problem, which is why the long-term care part of this is so important. Well, their solution to try to get you there is that you actually buy into the community and they say that part of what you're paying into the community is in fact sort of like long-term care coverage because then you are able to age in place which sounded really really exciting and a couple of people that were within earshot of the tv show when we were recording it were like oh i know this person i know this person it was literally two different people because we were doing this tv at our center 
And she had to set them straight. She said, the problem that you've already, you've already said this is not going to be an option because there's a health care challenge in each one of these situations that would negate the ability to get you underwritten anyway. And I think that's what you're talking about when you say we've got to get, get a hold of this now be- before we have other challenges. Am right. I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the good example, um, it's a little sarcastic, is we don't call State Farm after our house is burned down and said, can you give me a policy, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but on the other hand, there's a wide spectrum of options. I've, I wrote a policy uh, for a gentleman who was 89. Wow. <laughs> um, it's a home care service policy only. Okay. Um, so it's not going to cover skilled nursing. Um, but that's that takes me to the next point is that people assume that Medicare is going to pay for all of these things. Yes. <laughs> and Medicare does not. Um, what Medicare will pay for is the first 100 days of skilled nursing if you've been hospitalized for three consecutive midnights. Uh, um, that's a nuance that even a lot of Medicare agents aren't aware of. But what we say with our long-term care planning is this is not nursing home insurance. Yeah. It's nursing home avoidance. Because ah. if you have a policy that's going to help you pay, stay home, the longer you can stay home, the better. But if you have someone helping you managing hygiene, managing nutrition, managing mm-hmm. your medications, managing your fall risk, you're less likely um, to have to go to a facility or yeah. skilled nursing at all. And so the point is that eight out of ten claims, eight out of ten people, excuse me, that have a home care, have a policy, don't even go to a nursing home. Ah. Um, only 4% of claims are actually for nursing home care. Most of it is for home care. So. It, see, it seems like most people, you always hear that. I want to stay at home. And I was just thinking as you were talking about that, like in Jennifer's company, I mean, that that's really it. You know, when you get that right care at home, you're able to thrive and your life expectancy actually goes up because you're getting the right nutrition. You're getting, exactly. you're living in a safe environment. Right. All these things are going in the right direction. But I guess a question that really does come up when we start to talk about this is Joe was under the impression, and I, and he knows a lot more about this than I do, but he was under the impression that it's tougher and tougher to find companies that do that. But this is what you do, and you know where to look, right? So, yeah, there there are – when I show I, – what I do, my goal, because I'm Ramsey, you know, endorsed by Dave Ramsey, is right. my goal is to find the most efficient premium for the most benefit. So we're shopping price, right? Right. Um, but by what I meet with uh, – usually it's a couple, but not always – we do a side-by-side comparison of all the options available. Uh-huh. So there is a traditional comprehensive policy that's available. Um, there are hybrids, which will let you um, have some money back if you pass away before using the policy. Uh-huh. Um, there, oh. are, there are policies that you can uh, write for lifetime benefit. I have a lot of people who's ha- who have family members who have lived a long time, and they want to make sure that they have a, a policy that's going to pay the rest of their life, not just for three or five years. Right, right. Um, and there are actually annuities that can leverage dollars for the purpose of long-term care. They're actually designed for that. Um, so there's a, a wide variety of ways to uh, solve the pro- problem and protect the risk. Yeah, we're talking with Lori Peary of the Peary Agency. We're going to take a mid-show break. I want to make sure, though, I give you uh, a number Because as we're having this conversation, you're going to want to keep this number in mind and give her a call and say, like, okay, here's my situation. How do people get in touch with you? Um, Sure. Great question. My phone number is 321-848-3838. Um, you can call me or you can text me your name and I'll call you back as soon as I can. But I love helping people. Dave Ramsey has me working nationally. So um, wow. <laughs> I do a lot of Zoom calls with other people in other states. So I love working with people in Florida, which well, is where my resident that's license a, is. That's, a, that's exciting. So we're going to continue with the second half of uh, Helping Seniors Radio. We're going to continue this dialogue next. Stay tuned. 12.32 right now in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. You're listening to Helping Seniors of Revolve with your host, Carrie Fink. Let's get back to more of the show right now. Here's Carrie. Hey, thanks, John Harper. Welcome back to uh, the second half of Helping Seniors Lunchtime Gathering every Wednesday on the radio at 90.3 FM, WEJF. And welcome if you're listening online, WEJF.net, or if you're continuing along the podcast. And I say that because sometimes people may catch the second half of a show uh, because they just tuned in a little bit late. And one of the beautiful things is you can go back and pull out this show and miss some of the great, uh, or not miss some of the great conversation that happened in the first part of the show because there was a lot of excellent conversation, which I'm going to try to very quickly recap as I introduce our guest today. Uh, first, we'll start with attorney Frank Scaglione, who has been a volunteer helping the organization, helping Caesar Brevard. He is the guy that, when we say breakfast with an attorney, 
he's there teaching while we're eating. <laughs> and and the, 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 the project is the 55 plus renters of Palm Bay workshop. So while it's specifically designed and, and funded by, let me add that too, it's funded by the city of Palm Bay through a, uh, through some CDBG monies. But we do open it to people who say, no, listen, I really want to take advantage of this. You got to call us at 321-473-7770 and get information about the next date coming up March 16th. But Frank, you know, it, I've really found it to be such a useful program. Um, you know, in my in my world, I'm a landlord, so I want to know to make sure we're doing stuff right on this side of it. But when I hear also from the stories that folks come in and ask you questions about it at the breakfast. I'm like, oh my goodness, that doesn't sound right at all. And then you're able to kind of like show them exactly where they fit relative to what the law says about it. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, a lot of times something doesn't sound right, yeah. and it, but it's actually allowed. Yeah. And um, so one of the things I try to do in the in the program is help people focus on the things that they can affect. Yes. Because um, – you know, there, there may be something that your landlord's doing that, you know, you don't like and you think is wrong, but it's maybe, allowed. It's, you know, the law allows it or the lease allows it more often than not. It's the lease, not necessarily the law that allows it. Um, but, you know, in that case, it's not really worth – it's not really worth stressing over. Right. Uh, the things that you should be focusing on are like – paying your rent um what the landlord is allowed to do to collect the rent or to um the notices that he has to give you to evict you if you didn't pay your rent yeah. um the the sort of things that the landlords is and is not allowed to tell you that you can't do yeah during during the term of the lease um so there there's a lot of things that people like assume um that their assumptions are often wrong because they get it maybe from television or <laughs> <laughs> well i watched perry mason <laughs> you know yeah. yeah or just because the power imbalance between yeah. between a corporate landlord a large corporate landlord and you know an individual tenant they just don't they just assume that they can't do something and often they can yeah you know i i love one of the things that i've heard you you say when you go into the process you say sometimes there's a good reason why you're not able to pay your rent but it may not be a legal reason and so yeah you know i think that's an important distinction as you walk us through that in the seminar um, because you're helping us frame what we can do correctly and what we can't do and just sometimes really understanding your situation is half the battle knowing you know here's where i'm at these are my constraints, but these are my options. And then, you know, you can make the best decision you can with whatever, you know, I guess whatever cards are on the table, if that's the right way to say it. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you got to call us at 321-473-7770. You'll talk to either Nancy or Karen, and they will help uh, get you coordinated. Again, it's free of charge. Uh, but you do have to be registered, and there's some paperwork. There's always paperwork, right, that you have to go through, and they'll lead you through it. But uh, I hope we'll see you on March 16th uh, at Mimas. And then let me also continue the introductions with none other than Jennifer Barton, who is Seniors Helping Seniors of Brevard, great organization that hires seniors to help seniors in their home. Plus, plus, and I love talking about this. We don't have a whole lot of time for it today, but you're also the agent for Electronic Caregiver, which is a really cool technological tool that helps uh, helps in ways when you can't have somebody there physically with you. Right, absolutely. And we, we really love that part too because we are the first rung in that level of care. So a lot of our clients are still very active, very social, and we want to keep them that way. So if we're not around, they can have the electronic caregiver with them. They can walk through the neighborhood. They can walk through Wickham Park and feel safe because it will respond wherever they are. If they you know, are in the woods in Wickham Park and kind of fall into the bushes, they're going to know exactly where they are and they can respond uh, but it also can do medication reminders, blood pressure reminders. There's a lot of different things. There's an app for that, of course. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of things that it can do to help people stay 
social um, yeah. and, and get out and exercise, but still stay safe. You know, I think one of the things that I really appreciate about what you guys do is you really are looking after the senior in every way possible. And I, when you were describing what the electronic caregiver can do, how affordable it is, I mean, you know, our first joke was, oh, that's the help I've fallen, I can't get up button. And, and you know, we used to laugh at that when we were younger, but now as we get older, we understand how how really serious that can be, you know? Well, it is. And, I, you know, I, I hope that we can take that stigma away because they're now selling these to college kids. That's what that Large was the point. Large campuses trying to walk across the campus at night, they're selling them because they – you don't have to try to fiddle with your cell phone, getting it open and unlocked and trying to call. You can just hit a button and help is on the way. So they're, they're selling them even to young people. Yeah. So I, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to, to give your number because th- for three reasons. One, you may be a senior that is looking to get some help, some extra help at home on that first rung. You might be a senior who's looking for a good job. And I love how I've heard you say it. You look for somebody with the heart of a volunteer who doesn't mind accepting a paycheck. So a great company to work for. But then also somebody may be intrigued. I said, like, I heard you guys talking about the, the electronic caregiver. What's that all about? How do they reach seniors helping seniors? Jennifer Barton. We can be reached at 321-722-2999. Again, that's 321 722 Two nine nine nine, and one quick plug. You know, we do hire gentlemen. We always think of caregivers as ladies, but mm-hmm. we love to hire gentlemen, um, especially veterans, because a lot of times gentlemen would prefer another gentleman to come into the house. Yeah. So you know, if you're a gentleman in the Melbourne area, we would love to hear from you. Okay. So again, the number to reach you guys three two one seven two 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 nine nine nine. Okay. And with that, we're, we're going to kind of continue on the discussion. Sometimes I wish we didn't have to take a mid-show break because sometimes the discussion in the room really is furthering the stuff we got to talk about in the first half of the show. But uh, if you remember, I kind of introduced um, Lori Peary with the Peary Agency as somebody that we have really hoped would come our way along the way because ever since Joe Steckler founded this organization, he's talked about the importance of long-term care insurance. And even Joe himself, who keeps his ear to the ground as well as anybody out there, has said it's, you know, he feels it's been tougher to find reasonable care. And so then in walks Laura Peary, who is not only an expert in this, she's Dave Ramsey certified expert in this. And as we were talking about just before the break, people call you from all over the country to kind of like tap in and say, here's where I'm at. Welcome back. Thank you so much. So I wanted to continue the conversation because we we kind of like raised the question, what exactly can long-term care insurance help me with? And what time uh, what time in our lives should we be taking uh, to look at that? And one of the key things I took away from the first half of our conversation was you want to do it while you can still get through medical underwriting. Is that a really a big problem or how serious is that as you sit down and you talk with families? It just depends. I, um, I love how Jennifer gave an example. I had a, a couple, she was 63 and he was 50 uh-huh. and we thought we might have some problems with her uh-huh. um, and he would be fine. She got approved preferred, and he got declined. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's because he never went to the doctor, um, ah. and his PSA was elevated. So we might have ah. saved his life, even though we didn't get him a policy. Right. So it just it, it completely depends on um, the particular person and their underwriting classification. You can apply for a certain level, and then through underwriting, be offered a different a level. But it, at the end of the day, I say I always say if you have an offer – Accept it because it's gold. Yeah, because you're you're not likely to get um, younger tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's a kind, that's a kind of for sure. And right. like like we talked about in the first half of the show, we call it getting your ducks in a row. And we said the two the two kind of corollaries is don't try this on your own. Get some expert help. It's one of the things that I love about what you're talking about is the fact that you have the ability to seek out because you're not beholden to any one Correct. particular company. You can right. look through everything that's available out there and navigate them towards what's going to be right because everybody's situation is somewhat different. That's exactly right. I am not captive. Yeah. So that what, what that means, and when I meet with people, I tell them I don't work for Dave Ramsey. He does endorse me, but I don't work for him. I don't work for a particular company. Uh-huh. I work for you. My, my job is to be your advocate, to find the best price, the best policy that fits your goals, that fits your aging plan, that fits your price, and fits your budget. 
Yeah. So that's that's what we do is we roll up our sleeves and together we figure out what makes sense for each person. So let's walk this back a notch. If somebody says, you know, I've been putting this off, which goes back to our don't be an ostrich, don't stick your head right. in the sand. You're not going to get younger. And it and particularly with aging, I don't think it gets better because you put it off. I think all that happens is it costs more money and it closes off more options. So you want to try to get ahead of this as much as you can. But I guess a question is if somebody is like, okay, you're, you know, you're goosing me. I got to, here we go barnyard again. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're goosing me that I've got to do something about this. But most of us don't even know where to begin. Where do we begin in this whole thing? Well, sometimes we can work backwards. For example, a lot of people think that they, they say that the word self-insure and that, uh -huh. that's a misnomer because we are not insurance companies with deep pockets and lots of leverage, but they say self-fund. So the, a lot of people have most of their wealth in a qualified account, which is like a 401k. Uh -huh. um, the problem with that is that it's not your money. Uh, you have to pay Tax. the same, yeah. <laughs> right? So we've got to take you know that, that off the top. And then your 401k, depending on the market, could be a 201k. Wow. And so that's not the best, most efficient way to plan for your care. Um, the other thing that I've had people tell me, I learn a lot of people, a lot of things from people that tell yeah. me their thoughts. They they say I'm a real estate investor and I've got multiple properties. I thought I would just sell one or two when I need care, and then I thought it through. And what if I don't? What if I have a cognitive impairment and I can't negotiate a contract? Right. To sell a property or two, or what if? Um, the market's not moving. Yeah. Right. So that's again a precarious plan. It's not a a you know a plus aging plan for sure. Um, so what we try to do is maybe piece together all of the different resources that are available. Yeah, you've got rental properties. Yeah, you've got qualified money. But by by themselves, are those the most efficient way um, to solve the problem? And and that's what we try to do. It's everybody's different. We look at the whole picture. Yeah. So, you know, here's, I mean, guess I guess a question is, uh, is this like, uh, out of reach cost wise for most people? Do you have to be like in the upper echelon to be able to, uh, manage the cost of a, of a long-term care? Um, I would say no. I okay. would say when people get sticker shocked, um, in the conversation they have with me, they're more surprised at the cost of care than they are the cost of the policy. And when we talk about what that risk is, um, for example, we have different calculators and actuary, you know, tools mm -hmm. that are not perfect science, of course. But, you know, if the cost of care is expected in 20 years to be seventeen to $25,000 a month, um, what does that look like to your personal portfolio if you're pulling out that much money every month? And how long will your care last? So by to answer your question, what we do is we design the policy that's going to fit the budget. Again, leverage the dollars so that you're spending a dollar to get 10 kind of a thing. I can't give you a price because it depends on the person who's applying their age and their underwriting classification um, and what they what they want to design their policy to be. Yeah, I'd love to have uh, either Frank or Jennifer jump in on this conversation because I was going to say that was one of the ouch moments that when, when Lori, you walked in and we were talking about this before the show. And I was thinking, you know, because Joe always quotes, he says like, okay, if you're in a skilled nursing home, it's going to be 10000 a month. But you brought it to a whole nother level when you said, but you got to think about when you might be needing this 10 years from now, and it's going to be double that. Frank, that's like a big number. That is. And, you know, uh, I was just thinking about this from an attorney's point of view. Um, and I often hear from my own parents, like, we want to leave you some money. You know, yeah. they, so somebody might somebody might not do this because they want to save that money so that they can leave it to their kids. But I've seen enough fights between siblings. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the money that was left over, that I tell my parents, I don't want anything. Just use it on, just take it on, take care spend of it on the insurance, spend it on trips. Like, don't leave me anything. You're a good son. And, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I love my sister, and I don't want anything to come between us. Uh, you know, and um, but I've seen a lot of that, yeah. and it, and a lot of it is because um, the the parents think yeah. that they're doing the right thing for their kids by just squirreling away all that money yeah. when really the best thing they can do is take care of themselves so that they don't have that the kids don't have that burden and the fights that come with it afterwards yeah. that makes so much sense you know i was thinking jennifer there that we have a uh, a very good friend of helping seniors he's a board certified elder law attorney his name is uh, bill johnson and he's usually on the radio with us the first uh, first wednesday of each month 
And one of the things that I've heard him say is he said he's shocked by, you know, you ask people what their goals in retirement are. They're talking about which golf course they want to play and things like that. You know, it's all the stuff you want to do your whole life. He said very, he goes like, there's a list of these top 20 things. He said the national, he quotes this U.S. News and World Report thing. And he said like long-term care ends up being like number 18, Jennifer. Well, and you know, I I totally agree um, that sometimes the money becomes a problem after. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, but they earn that money. They, they it's their have, money. <laughs> exactly. It's their money and that it should be used for their benefit instead of the kid's benefit. But I hear that so often that they're trying to squirrel that money away. They're trying to save it for the kids when it could be used for their care and it could be used to, you know, a better quality of life for them, um, and less burden on the children. You're right. So it, it just use that correctly. Yeah. You know, Lori, that was a point I was going to make. It's like it probably if I would make this, I would say it this way, you could argue if you feel differently, but I would think like if you're parents and you love your children, when you take the time to investigate and set up long-term care insurance, you're, you're actually doing them a favor because then you're, you've got, you've got a plan set up. So you're, you're not going to be a burden. Am I saying that the right way? Oh, that's exactly right. That's that's part of my interview when I'm interviewing people in the process is what, what are you protecting? Who are you protecting? Many people say my kids, Mm -hmm. many people say my house. Um, many people say each other. Yeah. Um, he wants a policy for her cause he knows he's going to die first and he wants a policy. She, he knows he can't lift her Ah. or she can't lift him. Ah. You know, so it's, it's kind of, you know, many spouses are like, I want that. We want this for each other. Um, so it's, it's really, you're right. It's not something that people want to think about <laughs> right. until they have an event with their own parents, until they see the struggles that their own parents went went through, yeah. until they see um, how quickly their their parents went through their own money and maybe ran out of money. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really a big part of the conversation is what are you protecting? No, that's a that's an excellent point, and I guess one of the things that that you're in a unique position to be able to sit down help them analyze where they're, where they're at and what the best plan moving forward is. Because what we talk about, and, and again, this is to me like one of the key t- takeaways, Lori, is that you have to make these moves before you run into something that would preclude that move from even being an option. You know, so like you're talking about the underwriting and all those things, but you set it in. Is there an advantage to setting it up? I'm talking about financially. Earlier on, does that have to do with anything? Oh, definitely. Every year you age, the premiums go up. Aha. Yeah. So another reason not to be an ostrich. <laughs> Which is why I was delighted to be able to help the 36-year-old couple because their premiums are just so nominal compared to the policy benefits they can get. So Yeah. Yeah. But the flip side of it is when you were talking about what things might cost, it, you know, I mean, who would have ever thought you'd pay, you know, what you pay some for some things at the grocery store. So you can, if you just project yourself out 10 years, you know, even if things cool off a little bit in terms of prices going up, you know, they're not going down, right? <laughs> well, th- what I say is we're living in a silver tsunami, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The baby boomers are booming into the space. And if you know anything about economics, it's a supply and demand conversation. Yes, yes. And so if you walk into a facility with a policy um, compared to someone who doesn't have one, you know, you're probably going to be closer to the top of the list. But yeah. there are a lot of other benefits. I'll just mention this real quick because it really came to light. Um, that go with the policy. One is home modification. One is caregiver training. Ah. One is bed reservation. I had a client tell me my mom had a stroke. She was in a skilled nursing facility. She had to go to a hospital. When she was in the hospital, the facility called and said, if you don't give us $400 a day, we, we're going to have to remove your mom's stuff because we have a waiting list. Wow. And so that's one of the benefits on the wow. policy is bed reservation. I never, I thought that was maybe a fine print item, but no, it's a big deal. Wow. It's so. un- unbelievable because, you know, th- this go- <laughs> kind of goes back to something, I guess, Frank, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother time. But, you know, I didn't really realize this could become a problem with assisted livings and things like that, where, you know, we're, when we talk to the renters of Palm Bay in that program, we're talking to people who are pretty much independent and they live in their own place and they can manage what they do. They're just maybe struggling with some of the issues. You know, maybe it's the cost to rent or things like that, but wow, you get into that whole side with the nursing homes. That's, that's difficult too. 
Yeah, that's a that's a whole that's a whole different ball game. <laughs> Kettle there. of fish, or yeah. whatever they say. <laughs> wow. So, Lori, if if we're going to take heed of what you're trying to teach us today, what is what would you tell us we should do next? I mean, obviously, it would be to call you, but what else what else should we do to kind of get familiar with this space and start th- get, wrapping our heads around how this could be part of our aging plan? So I think education is a, a big, like I said, that's my, my number one goal is to educate people and it's their decision on the, what direction they want to go. But um, I think just setting up a, a conversation would be helpful um, for anyone who wants more information. I mean, that's really what I'm about is information. I, uh, yes, I, um, I'm, I sell insurance, which everyone hates as much as car, <laughs> <laughs> but my goal is to help people. And, um, and so if I help you, great. If you walk away and you it just got information, great. That's my goal is to help people understand the risk and the option. And that I guess the most important takeaway for me is that this is not nursing home insurance. This is nursing home avoidance. I had a friend come on the auto train from New Jersey to Florida to go sport fishing and hog hunting. She and her husband bought a policy when they were 50. She is now on claim and the, the, her home health aide traveled with her on the auto train to go oh, sport wow. fishing and hog hunting. And he gets paid $450 a day from her policy. Wow. So that's a quality of life with, uh, with um, needing assistance with activities of daily living. Wow, it makes all the makes all the difference in the world. You know, I I I was going to say uh, you probably do this. Do you do seminars and things like we? I was th- thinking, Jennifer, we need to have her come to the center and do like a educational seminar because I don't think many of us know enough that we need to be knowing about this topic. I know Joe has talked about it for years. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic because a lot of people just hear the word insurance. And, and we run the other, where's negative. the exit? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what makes, that's what makes this, this job tough about, that's why we jokingly call it, you know, get your ducks in a row and try to find ways to be maybe a little bit too cutesy sometime about it. But what we're really trying to do is get ourselves engaged in a conversation that we know we need to have. We just keep putting it off, right? And so I assume, uh, Lori, when you go through the process of working with a client, they get signed up and you, and you found the right match for them. There must be like an overwhelming sense of um, peace that they get to, right? Because oh, absolutely. They're yeah. just so relieved. Yeah. They're so, and the, the other thing is they feel like they can go and spend their money, the rest of their money now because they're not saving it for their care so they can enjoy their retirement because this is, this problem has been protected. Yeah, I've heard that from like the elder law attorneys who are always, you know, we think they're browbeating us, but it's for our own good. They tell us, you know, you got to get your paperwork done. And it's the same thing. It's like if you love your family, then you're actually giving them peace of mind as well as you're giving yourself peace of mind, right? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Lori Peary with the Peary Agency, I mean, you you do much, much more than long-term care insurance because I was reading you do Medicare and all sorts of other things. Real quickly, I want to make sure people know how to reach you if they would like to carry the conversation further. Sure. My my phone number is 321-848-3838. My website is, it's Laura, L-A-U-R-A, Peary, P-E-E-R-Y, two E's, agency.com. And my email is peeryagency at gmail.com. So... That sounds pretty good. And Jennifer Barton, we talked earlier, uh, we talked about you might want to call you guys for help in the home. You might want to call if you're a senior who wants an excellent job uh, and you have a heart of a volunteer but don't mind a paycheck. And we talked about electronic caregiver. If people want to reach you about that, how do they do that? 321-722-2999. And that's Seniors Helping Seniors. And uh, Attorney Frank Scaglione, thanks for joining us today as well. Uh, I really appreciate all the time that you donate into this. It's so it's so important. And people, when they come to this, they can't believe that they're actually getting to ask an attorney these questions. And, and literally, corporately, in your day job, you really are kind of an expert in this side of the law. I realize you deal with a lot of corporate clients and, and challenges that happen there on the, um, on, the, on the lease side. But that gives you a kind of a unique perspective to help us as we're trying to figure out stuff we can do if we're renters here in Palm Bay. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. I got a little <laughs> cough there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, I do a lot of my work on the landlord side. So yeah. you're kind of getting the uh, inside baseball also from 
the other yeah. perspective. It's really valuable. So the next session is March 16th, and you'll want to uh, call our – if you missed any of these numbers, by the way, you want Laura Peary's number, you want uh, Jennifer Barton's number, you want Frank Scaglioni's information about the uh, seminar coming up, just give us a call on the Senior Information Helpline, 321 473 seven 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 zero we're just about out of time i want to thank you guys for being in the studio today i have just enough time to pitch a helping seniors car raffle ticket because they are online jennifer Woohoo! the and adventure begins the adventure begins because we call it choose your adventure and we'll have to come back and talk about that more on the next episode because we really are just about out of time but you can go to helping seniors car raffle.com find out all the cars you could choose in the choose your adventure or you could call us again that number that you really want to post it on a little sticky note by your bedside by your phone 321-473-7770 that's the helping seniors helpline and that's the time we have for today we'll see you next week on helping seniors radio